this this sort of demo is basically talking about the principles of getting your armies painted. You know, we all we all buy these wonderful models from Fort George and Games Workshop, and I know a lot of the times it, it sort of stays under your bed or it sort of um, sits on your shelf, or and you go one day I'll paint those models. Um, and, and the thing is, we all love these models. We all think these these are great to do and great to have, but. They've got to be painted. It's 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 a crime and a sin if you don't paint your models. In my mind, you just might as well leave, you know. Um, and what what you need to do is get a mindset with painting. You know, as as we all get older, we get responsibilities. When you're 18, you can sit for 20 hours painting a sword. You can sit for 20 hours painting that face. But as you get long in the tooth, and you get family commitments, I'm looking. You get family commitment, you get other things, you need to get the most you can for your time. And I've come down with a sort of set of principles that if you work to this, you'll get an army painted. You know, I, I, I harp on about this quite a lot to everybody. But if you do work through these, it does work. You know, okay, you see, the, you see all the photographs of the heavy metal painted armies in the books. You know, these guys are doing it constantly, you know, 24 hours, you know, they're, they're doing it for 37 and a half hours a week. They're, that's their job. But if you go with that mindset of going, I want them to look like that, you'll never get an army painted. It's just not that easy to get an army painted, that's how. But you can have a nice army painted for gaming. Now, obviously, if you're doing something for a golden demon, that's something different. You paint a different style. And there's people like Keith Robertson who'll do a talk about painting characters, about painting really nice character centre models. That's a different thing. That's a different mindset. So the best thing you can have is a deadline. Deadline's the best thing you can have in your life. If you go, I've got a game in two weeks' time, I need to get this squad done. That gives you a deadline. I want this army painted for this tournament, another deadline. So set yourself a deadline. That's the first principle. The second one is don't assemble all your models. Don't put them all out on a shelf, all grey, staring at you, you know, pointing their finger at you, you haven't painted at me. If you think of it as like a balance of scales, you put all your unpainted models in one scale and your painted ones in the other. It's going to do that. And that will demoralise you. It's thinking, don't get demoralised. Put ten models out, paint ten models. Those painted ten models then sit on a shelf and you start building up an army in the positive, not the negative. Not going, I've got 200 models to paint and I've only painted ten. Again, looking at that scale, it just demoralise you. See all the painted ones. Get proud of those. Feel good about that. That's another principle. The other one is try and get your paints out of a pot, spray can or airbrush as a bog standard colour. Don't go mixing because there's always nothing worse than going, now what was that mix I did? You know, it was it was blue, it was green, it was if it's out of a pot, it's easier to replicate. Everything I paint has come either out of a spray can or is a workshop or various paints that I use. I get everything to make my life simple. Think of a colour scheme as well. So when you play planning your army, do a practice figure so you know that colour scheme is going to work. What's the predominant colour on an army? With the black ones, obviously going up to Raven Guard. If I hold those up to there. The Raven Guard ones, it's always going to be a black undercoat. But all my armies come off a black undercoat. And the reason why is if you turn the figures over, and also come up later on and have a look at these, the shadow underneath. And a shadow is better than grey, plastic, white metal or resin. You can turn them over and it looks fine. So again, what I will do is I'll spray all my models black, even if they're going to be white, and then spray white over the top. Spray the white while the black is still wet. That way then they blend and you get greys and you get a really nice transition rather than a contrast of black and white. That way then again it, it just jars the eye. So again these have been sprayed black then white. Same with coloured models. Same again, spray it black, put the base colour over the top. Now this happens with every model I do. The other thing you can remember is when you're painting armies and getting them painted quickly, is assemble everything. If you're painting something like a Knight Titan, uh, a Titan or a Knight or something, get it assembled because if you're painting it in separate pieces, that's five or six figures. 
in your mind. It's five or six figures you're painting. If it's one, and it's one big night, it's one figure. So again, a mindset of, I'm painting a model. Don't break them all down into little bits, because you think, I've spent a whole day painting all these shoulder pads, I stick them on the figures, and they're still not finished. So it's, it's thinking cleverly how you paint your army. So we'll run through the process of these colours. For the coloured one, I start with spraying them black and putting their base colour on. Again, if it comes out of a can, this is fantastic. So you can spray the black on, and while it's still wet, spray the base colour over the top. So then again, you can see it on this model here. There's a shadow. All the shadows are underneath. Aim for painting your models from above, because that's the most you see them on the table. On the battlefield, you're looking down on them. You're in a godlike view. And again, if you're laying on the side, you'll still see the colour, but you'll also see the shade. Next, I'll put on all the base colours. Now, this this probably will stay. All that I'll do is the colours, the base colours. So I'll paint the metals first, because then if you get any over where the, me the metal colour goes over onto another part, you can touch it up, and paint, paint the colour back on. So again, paint all the metal parts, paint your shoulder pads. Pick, picking out all those details is a lot easier. After that. I give the whole thing a, a layer of gloss varnish. The thing with the gloss varnish is it allows you, as I've spoken to a few people before, putting transfers on is a lot easier to apply to a gloss surface. Um, those of you who don't know, if, if you imagine the surface of a Space Marine, that's his shoulder pad. When you spray your colour on, the, the paint, matte paint, has gaps in it. Okay, if you looked under a microscope, there's been little porous layers. When you put a transfer over that, the silver linings that you see around your transfer is air trapped under the... And that is because all these little pockets hold air, so that transfer doesn't sit as snug, smug, snugly on top of that. If you put a layer of gloss beforehand, the gloss gets rid of all those little dents and, and holes and very, very tiny imperfections. You lay a transfer over the top, it will smoothly fit on, it'll blend in really nicely, and then on the top of that, another layer of gloss seals it in. You'll never be able to see a transfer line. All the figures I use, transfers. Again, it's another quick thing to get your armies painted. Hand painting's fantastic if you're doing one figure. If you want to do 50 with that Raven Guard symbol on, transfers is the way to go. So, at that point, I've put the gloss on, from then on, I'll put a wash on, and this is this is the wash I use on 90% of my figures. It's a mix of the old Griffin Seeker and Badad Black. You can use the Reichland Flesh Noon Oil. It's got a bit of the Lamia Media mixed in it and water. I'll wash that over the top, and to be honest, that's where I stop on most models. I'll matte varnish it or purity seal it at the end, and that's where I've finished. That way then, I've got a model done. I aim to get squad of 10 guys done in about five hours that way you start building your armies up you know i put i put an hour at lunchtime a day and i could get a squad of 10 guys done keeping it simple if you start going well i put a highlight on this edge and that edge it adds time to your models these are troops you want loads of these on the battlefield same with vehicles i'll do the same thing with vehicles i'll treat myself spray it i may go lighter on some of the parts of the armor but we'll discuss that in a different um, seminar. Same again, we'll go with the white ones, you know, world eaters. I've sprayed them black, so again, these are probably easier to see. You can see the shadow underneath on the first one. And again, because I've sprayed the white onto the black while it's wet, I've got a grey transition. You can see... There is some shade, there's some bits where, but if you can't get the paintbrush to it, it's a shadow, it doesn't matter. Next layer, I'll put on my base colours. So I've done bronze helm, picked out blue, silver silver on the um, banding. And that's basically it. It's just going through those bits, keep it neat, and it's no highlights, it's just one colour. The brighter the model is at the beginning, the lighter it will shine through at the end. So if you're thinking about doing, you know, salamanders don't go for a dark green go for quite a light 
limey coloured green because you're going to put washes over the top of that. And if you think of washes as the same principle as a, chap, uh, uh, a, a, lan a lens on a light and they put filters over the top, do you get a different colour? Every time you put a filter over that colour, it knocks it down, it darkens it. So if you're doing that with your painted models, that's going to do the same thing. So if you start with a dark model, it's only going to get darker. So start your models light and bright and get as much colour trapped on that model beforehand. Don't go with pastel shades, go for bright primary colours. Once you put those washes over the top, it starts bringing them back down. They do look garish. They look, they, sometimes your models look quite garish and horrible. Stick with it, put the washes on, and trust me, it does work in the end. So, next stage. Again, these guys have been glossed. and shiny and I've put the transfers on so we've got transfers on these guys okay. so go and put all your markings on another layer of gloss over the top and then we get to this stage here and that's just with the sepia wash picked out all the areas and a little bit of a dry brush at the end on these ones just to pick out that brass bronzy coloured helmet and that's all you need to do. The other thing you notice on most of them, I didn't do on these ones, that shows how bad I am, is I put the basing on first as well. So I do the bases. Get everything done on that model first. Bit of, bit of rubble, and then you can paint that up at the same time. So at the last process, you start painting in your colour. Ideally, if you've got an airbrush, you can airbrush all your bases at the same time. Um, if not, dry brush or just painting your primary colours at the same time as you're doing primary colours here. So with black, with black guys, or, or the um, Raven Guard, Iron Hands, those kind of things, these are brilliant. You start off with a black spray paint, go for a grey, I went for a, a sort of dark, dark grey on these guys, because again, they look quite bright at that stage, but once they're washed, see the difference? So you see the grey here, this grey looks all, that doesn't look like Raven Guard. But actually, because I've put filters of washes over the top, it tones it down, it darkens it. The other thing you get sometimes is when you're painting a model, you want an area to look brighter. So what, the, what in your mind is, the idea is, you'll add white to it. But don't add white to that area, darken the areas around it, and immediately it makes your other area brighter. Again, it, it's time, it's... it's it's easier ways of doing things rather than spend that time again. Well, if I add white to this, I'll highlight this up and do more painting. Don't bother. Make it as simple as possible. Get as, get the colour in at the at the beginning. Don't worry about highlights. <laughs> you know, you want as many figures as you can on the table. And again, put the transfers on at this stage, so the armour's glossed. And ask all of you come come and have a look at these when I'm over there. They're, they're free to have a, have a nose here. Yeah? put the wash on and work on the base and that is the basic principle of all my, all my finger painting now obviously if you're working on characters you spend more time it's a prime art you don't want to spend five hours working on a prime art you want to spend a bit more but on your bog standard troopers your terminators your marines this is such a simple method of getting armies done quickly um, I'll show you the other method that I've done is with these guys and these are sprayed black and dry brush silver now this is this, this this dry brush method is a bit scary so I'll go through the principles yeah purity seal everything at the end and it all drags it all back together So the Necron Dry Compound, spray the guy, I mean these are for iron hands, but it works with the principle of others if you want that worn, grimy armour look. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'll take some of the Necron Compound. And at this point you can see, you know, it's pretty much like a metallic, and I'll do dry brushing over the top. 
and you can go as crazy with this as you like because what we're going to do with these ones is and trust me paint, paint iron hands is probably the easiest army we do <laughs> I mean you can do this with iron warriors as well but you just add a bit more silver to it <coughs> and then it's the same principle as that filter over a light because I've got such a bright area here you can see the silvers I'll then take my wash flood this wash on and again what this is then doing is putting a filter layer over that silver it doesn't look as bright now and you can do this what's really nice with the iron warriors is you can use various wash colors so you can wash a bit of blue in there you can wash a bit of green in there and it all adds to that depth of color it's not just black armoured what you're doing is you're, you're, you're taking the contrast knocking the contrast down on the flat areas of the armour and then this is putting that, that layer on that I said adds depth to it and you just build these let this dry if it doesn't if it still looks too bright add another layer over the top and keep doing this until you're pleased with the model now what will happen as well is sometimes <coughs> which I've done it here so that will dry to this sort of state here, which is a sort of, if you look at it closely, it's got all sorts of colours in there. There's blues, there's silvers. So then if, you, if you think it's looking a little, little bit dead and it needs a little bit more life. I can't find his paintbrush. It's going to sit, oh yeah, there we go. Just at the end, flick, just flick the brush over the tops of the highlights of the edges and it'll pick out just those edges that are worn. Simple as that. And you can build that the other way of make, making a quick method. You know all that banding you get on the shoulder pads and that, there's a real faff to do. Silver paint pen. Silver paint pen. And you can do that on shoulder pads. And you can get gold paint pens. You can do that. And it's such a quick method. Just just imagine how easy it is to do 50 space prints now. You just go pss, 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 draw around them and they're done. If that's too bright, bit of your wash back on. This gentleman is laughing, just going, oh. Yeah, you know that time when you've sat there going, yeah. I could just do this edge. Yeah, just a minute. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just doing it. Or I could just go, right, I'll just do those rivets. There's a rivet, there's a rivet, there's a rivet. You know, I've painted the rivets now. <laughs> it's a bit blurry, but I didn't paint blurry, by the way. So it's, it's just understand how there's a photo. It's making your life easier. Yeah. No. I mean, you could do this at, at stage probably. I would put this on at this this sort of, this stage when I put the base colours on. So if it's too bright, if it's too shiny, it's still in your face. You've still got your washes and your layers on as well. The, the only downside to this, they do, it does rub off quite easily but because I'm sealing it in a layer of gloss that ain't gonna happen you know don't don't worry about the thing of oh my models are looking shiny because at the end purity seal them all down you know I talked to the guys about this before that purity seal in the can is just the best it's not too matte it's not too glossy and it just knocks everything down but it also seals all your all your nice paintwork in keeps all the damage but you know these things anything to make your life easier that is is the principle that works for me you know if I don't want to spend 
five hours with 15 different silvers going on. I don't quite love it here. If I go, one bright silver, put a load of washes on, it's done. And trust me, you, you try these techniques, I, I, I urge to go and try these techniques, I tell you need to go and try these techniques, but you'll do them and you'll just start seeing those armies grow and it'll just be like, oh, I'll get those, the next box out, I'll get the next box out. And we all want to paint those toy soldiers that we've invested all our time, money and effort. You know, it's not just loft insulation, as we know, you know. <laughs> it's, it's time to get those models out, get the paint brushes out, just be neat, put on the colours, nice clean colours, get them on and let the washes and, and the, the wash magic do its trick as it were. Um, and that is the principle of it. It's, it's, it's Like I say, it's simple. It's just a matter of painting them and having a mindset of don't lay all your figures out as I go on before. Don't, don't build all your figures. I know it, it feels like you get that army and you think, I'm going to build them all. That's the first job, build them all. Don't, because it will just demoralise you. Um, the other thing I've, I've found over the years is, and I, I used to laugh at this, I used to just make armies and just paint them, and they go, I'll work out the points at the end. And if you've got a game, just paint the bare minimum of what you need. It's a lot easier, as I've found out as well. You know, before I used to go, I'll collect five of those, I'll have those, I'll have those. And then when you come to write an army, you go, well, I've painted those, I didn't use them. So if you're doing a new army, do have a look through the codex, do plan a little list down and go, actually, you know, you can give and take with a few of the army lists, but actually, plan it, and then you don't have to paint all the other excess, and you see an army grow. Um, this afternoon I'll be doing talks about basing and quick, quick techniques of how to make your basing and how to do different techniques on those and painting terrain. So, again... It's probably a lot of this as well. So, <laughs> invest yourself in all all the sort of rifle and flesh you can buy. <laughs> um, so, I'm open to any questions. If anybody's got any, shout them out. We'll see what I can answer them. Um, again, after the seminar, come and have a word with me. Come and come and have a look at these close up. You know, it's okay seeing them on the screen, but you know, if you want to come back, have a chat. But if anybody's got any questions, fire them out. An airbrush is just another tool. It's the same as the paint pen. It's the same as it, it's what makes your life easier. Um, I, I found if you can get the primary colour out of a can, out of an airbrush, or out of a pot of paint, that is the best way. A lot of the times, people will try and do that thing of painting. You know, where the, on, on a marine, you've got those seals or those rubber joints. They'll spray the model black and then they'll try and paint leaving that black. It's a lot easier to paint the whole model, if it was a Blood Angel, bright red and go in there and pick out those bits than the other way round. The, the undersuit on a Space Marine is very easy, just get a pot of black paint go, because when you put the washes on as well, that washes adds to that shadow. I've bought cans from all over the places. Halfords do, you know, if you're doing a Space Marine that's in a silver colour, get a can of silver spray paint. You know, spray the whole thing silver. If it's a carp spray paint as well, it's going to be shiny. That's double bonus, because that means I don't have to do any glossary transfers. You know, find a colour that you're happy with that's going to go over your whole army and buy three or four cans of it, because there's nothing worse than going spraying that last thing and going, oh, they don't sell that colour anymore. Just, <laughs> you know. So get yourself a couple of cans, you know. That, that's just one of those things that you just go, I know I want to buy one, but I always buy two, because you always know that that last two marines that you're going to spray paint, it's <laughs> So, have a couple of cans. Mix the cans properly. I've always said that. You know, I know it says shake it for two minutes. How many times do we never shake our cans for two minutes? <laughs> right, that'll do. There's a there's the reason why you shake them that. It's to the balance of the paint and the propellant especially on varnishes matte varnishes are especially a terrible thing how many times do you spray a model and you've got that nice white chalky that beautiful model you've just painted and it's now got the chalky residue all over the inside that's because when you haven't sh shaken it for long enough or there's a temperature problem or if it's half a can there's an imbalance between the matting agent and the and the carrier propellant inside so with those there is a quick method of replacing that. If you've done it, and you've got that nice chalky residue, immediately spray it with gloss varnish. 
it'll soak up that residue and bring it back to life. But the other thing with that is practice on a miniature first because there's nothing. I, I've done it. I've also done the one where I've painted a nice bottle and picked up the right kind of paint and sprayed it black. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there's that one that primed it with black again. So, so that that's what, that I will say. Airbrushes, yeah, they're really good. You know, Forge World are looking at a range of airbrush paints at the moment. Um, they're a good way of getting colours that we don't do in, in pop form. But if you could, I mean, most car could. Alfred stuff, there's a, probably a car colour that's very close to whatever you want to paint these days. If you get yourself a can of spray paint, that's the best way of getting the base colours on. Think of what's my primary colour, you know, word bearers, okay, there's, there's blue, you may be tempted to go blue, but actually it's white. So you go, world is white, okay, you know, word bearers, it's a red, so you go for a deep dark red, you know, they are sort of supposed to be sort of bloody scarlet, crimson. I've got a different idea for Blood Angels, or Blood Angels to be bright, almost orangey bright. So you have different colours, so you go, that's my basic colour for my army. And I've got plenty of that. And then it's just a principle of just being neat and painting <coughs> just neatly everything in place. You don't have to be a brilliant painter. You know, it's just, you can spend an hour going, right, I'm going to do all my tech guys, I'm going to paint all the silver bits on them. That's my hours done. As long as you're seeing progress every day, that's the best thing. You know, if you look at it, you go, I can't see what I did from that two hours. Because we've all done that. We've all sat there two hours going, oh, that's a good manual. I look at this. And go, oh, I'm going to paint this really well. I'm going to oh, two hours gone. All right, I'll go. Utilize your time. Time's precious. You know, most of us have got families or commitments. You want to get something for your your painting time. So do that. Just just plan your colours. Get rid of all the other coloured paints. You don't need them just have those three or four colours whatever you're going to use and if you look at my models a lot of the times all the ones I've painted are probably three colours the most you know it used to be a metal a black and a primary colour and it, it just gets them done it just gets them done quickly you could go the other thing I would recommend is you know filling myself do a lot of this sponge chipping and damaging and things like that don't do it on figures like a marine because what it does is it camouflages a marine it works really well, and you lose those sharp edges. When you do all the chipping on the uh, on the armour, we've all done it, we've all gone, oh no, I'm going to make, make it look really damaged and cray. You put that chipping on the edge. From a distance, that acts like camouflage, and it breaks up the shape. I now only do chipping on big flat areas that are going to have contrast to, or vehicles no smaller than a dreadnought. It, it's not worth it. It's another layer of damage that you just think actually it doesn't work you know when I put my painted the bases on I always paint the bases last so I let some of the dust blow across the figures as well because again where are we you know it blends it to the base and it makes it look part of that figure so I let some of the overspray go over the legs it's fine it just gives it more character, it gives it more sort of like, tells a story, it's not this bright shiny marine who's come to this dusty battlefield, and he's spotless, you know, but that's, that's, that's the damage, so, but it's dead easy, it's so easy, I mean, you could also do that with a spray can from a distance, blast it from a distance, spray from below, you're just going to pick up the highlights of the lower legs, so you get a nice brown spray can for doing your earth colours. Um, and that's basically the principles I, I, I work by. Um, so, anybody else? Any questions? Yes, sir. What's the base colour on these Sons of Horus? The Sons of Horus ones are the colour we did on the Forge All website, which was a, um, there's a. There's a formula one of our figure painters worked out. But I used that, but I added white to it. I made it lighter. Again, because I'm going to put washes. See, so this is. See, I've got, you can see all the washes on it, so I've got light, and if you see the top of the gorget, that was the original colour, but because it's shiny, when you put your wash on, it wants to pull into crevices, that stops that, you know that thing where you paint a model with a wash and you get those dirty coffee stains, those tide lines, it's because it's not flowing, the paint's not flowing, what it's doing is settling on the surface, that's the matte layer underneath holding it in place. If your model's gloss, it will flow into the crevices. You can push the paint around a lot easier, the wash around easier. So again, it's that colour that's on the website with a bit more white added to it. I go always go lighter. And again, 
picking out this, this brass, it's just the basic brass out of a pot with the wash on the top. I can go in if I really want to put some silver highlight edges to it. And that is literally taking a dry brush and flicking over the top of it with a dry brush. Cool. Yes, no. There's on a gloss surface and there are products out there that the, the decal softener and decal fix. If you're having a big problem with, with decals going onto trans onto armor, we know shoulder pads is that weird curve. So when you put a transfer over the top, you want it to curve in, in several directions. And a transfer, depending on the, the thickness of the transfer film, won't do that. So you need a decal softener. Um, all that does is there's it usually comes in two bottles. You get a softener and a setter. The setter cleans the surface to help it bond. The softener helps it conform and softens the transfer. It almost starts making it sort of a bit more elasticated. Yeah. It, if you paint it with this, the other way you could do it is add tiny little nicks into it with a scalpel so it will start forming round. But that's a, a faff, to be honest. So, decal softener is your best thing. Uh, hobby suppliers will do a decal softener. What happens with that is you, you put a decal softener on, you let it set, and then you go back and look at it, and all the transfer is wrinkled and horrible. And you go, oh my god, I've messed this up. Oh no, what, what, what am I going to do? Now, just leave it. It's its natural course, and it's like it's drawing itself out. It goes wrinkly. Occasionally, you'll get these sort of like little high peaks. After a while, you can either wet your finger and just push out the air, or if you just want a tiny little hole in it, push out the air out of it. That, that'll help it conform around to a surface. The other thing is as well, I don't, if you're talking about transfers is a good thing. When, when, when you put transfers on, a lot, the idea is to tend to get a pot of water, drop the transfer in, let it wait till it floats to the surface. That's lost all its adhesive quality. The transfer has adhesive on the back. What I do is I get a, t a tissue, soak it in water, leave it on a tray, one of these trays I do, with just enough water. You know when we used to grow cress on a tray with a little damp towel? It's that kind of thing. Lay the transfer on there, and that can sit there as long as you like, and the water will just absorb into the paper backing, and then get a paintbrush, and as soon as you can move it, take that transfer off. Because that's still got its adhesive on. If you leave it so it starts floating and curling round, it's not going to stick. So get that transfer, don't stick it in water, stick it on a little soap piece of tissue or something. Take the transfer off, place it on, get your softener on if it needs to, to conform it. Let it dry overnight if, and then gloss over the top. And all of these, you can have a look at the transfers I've done, all of them are transfers, are forge wards, workshop ones. And they just, you can't see an edge. Um, it's basically <laughs> three pots of Griffin Sepia to three pots of Bad Black. So it's, it's a 50-50 mix. Uh, again, come up and have a look at it. I'll, I'll, I'll let you... It, it's got a nice fluid colour to it. You know, it flows really nicely. And it's it's got the warmth of the sepia still in it. So it's not completely uh, a Bad Black colour. It's not uber sepia it's got a nice I used to use the old Devlin mud but the Devlin mud just sort of knocked the life out of things a bit this has got a bit more warmth to it and it's just one of the colours I'm really happy with uh, but you can do that and I do that with a lot of colours if I'm doing terrain or I'll, I'll get some plastic pots and I'll mix large amounts so I know that when I'm doing all my all my bases they're all going to have the same mix on it or I'm doing all my figures they've got a whole mix because there's nothing worse again Realising Griffin Sepia doesn't exist anymore about a black, you know. It's like, so if you try and make a big pot of it, it's a good way of, you know, secure it for the future. Um, I, I, I mix about three or four pots of Lamia Medium in it, which is just paint without any colour in it, again to help it flow, and then it's just probably the same in proportions of the whole lot, again in water. So you, look, you, do, you you put all those in and then 
fifty percent of that is water. So it helps the flow. So six pots. Oh, sorry, nine pots. Yeah. So nine pots water. Pots water. Yeah. I mean, it's again, it's one of these things that whatever it is you're happy with, you want the viscosity of it. It's quite sort of gloopy, and it helps to sort of stick to surfaces and move around. But you don't want it just pouring off your model. So sometimes have a play around with that. But as you as you wash it on, you'll get a feel. You're thinking, if it's all pulled on the bottom of the base, it means it's, it's too runny. You need a little bit of a sort of like surface tension to it to hold down and dry and get your shadow. Um, and, and, and those principles are really what get you through models, to be honest. Um, again, if you're painting something like a primer, treat yourself. Paint, you know, I'm going to do two squads of marines, then I'm going to do a primer, then I'm going to do a vehicle. Or Would you put that mix through an airbrush as well? It, I think for an airbrush you could put that I think that's probably too thick I'd, I'd probably thin it a little bit more for an airbrush because obviously you want that to evaporate off but to be honest I'd probably just put it up with a brush <laughs> again again, you can sort of, I think sometimes an airbrush can put thin layers on and it, again it's putting that thin sort of filter over the top whereas this is sort of, I want this to get into the shades and the corners and I really want this to draw in dark recesses now another thing you can do is you can make yourself a lighter mix so if you're doing dark coloured armour you put a dark and <coughs> dusty light mix in and again that helps pick out the detail so it's not too monotone but I with the example of the Raven Guard I, I go with a grey so you can see the colour when it comes back down and it's all about contrast it's the one area against another so and like I said you know if you've got if you've got a, a shape draw, draw a box you want this area to be light darker that area and immediately that makes that the surrounding area looks brighter. People tend to go, I'll add white to this colour, or I'll add bright, yellow to this colour. You, you don't need to, you just need to darken different areas and around it. And again, you can do that in reverse if you want to lighten an area. Again, you do, you do, you do the reverse. You know. So just think about those kind of things as you paint the model. It's, it's that old lessons of light art, and sometimes it's not the area you want to work on it's the area surrounding it made that area punch out it's like it's like painting faces you know if you if you you know you, you paint a face what we what we try and do is we go you know you've got your temple area here well it, I, I paint a face by spraying it white and putting washes on so the face is completely white and I'll put a flesh wash on but then that flesh wash is so thin, you're still seeing the light underneath. You're seeing the white base coat underneath. So where on your cheekbone, your cheekbone is very close to the surface of your skin, that's a light area. So, so you've got a cheekbone area sort of there. That's going to be light. So rather than paint, put white onto that, I darken underneath. So you darken areas, darken the eye sockets, immediately makes the forehead lighter. These temple areas, put dark washes in there, and contrasting, and you're starting to do the work of the shading part. Most people will tend to work dark and work up and lighter and lighter and lighter, rather than work the opposite way around, because that, you've got as light as you can, so start knocking it back down. It's very easy to darken something light than it is to light something that's dark. So always get as much light and colour into your model first and then shade it down and bring it darker and darker and darker. Same with the principle of the Iron Warriors, you know, that was bright silver, Iron Hand, sorry, it's bright silver, but as I had more filter layers, it darkened it, darkened it. So where you were saying earlier, you would construct all the models in one to make it easier, yeah. with the heads, if you were doing bare heads. If I was doing bare heads, that's another thing. If you're doing bare heads, spray that white sticker on it when you've done all your, uh, your model. And that's only because I tend to paint a lot of my helmets with the helmets on because it's again it's a lot easier than painting faces. Another quick method. But you want to say that for your characters. You do spend a little bit of time for those sergeants and characters and officers, you know. So again, if you can 
So effectively do your sergeants without heads, keep all your sergeants separately, and then just pop their heads Pro in. Well, I, I would probably pop, pop the head on once I've got the base colour on, probably about here. Put the head on, and then I can start adding those washes and colours around him again. So it's not generally obvious that I've just stuck a head on. <laughs> cool. Embarrassing silence then. <laughs> right, time for a song. <laughs> well, thank you all for coming. If you've got any questions, come and see me. Come and have a chat. Come and have a look at the models. They're up here. Come and drink the sepia. <laughs> see you later. All the best. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. How would you get them to be like?